good start to the service. Thank you all. Amen. Welcome to the chapel. I'm Pastor Steve. Uh, Kent will be our leader this morning. Today is Communion Sunday, as you can see. But we are also thrilled because we have Buck's grandson, Wesley, here with us today uh, to, add, yeah, to add to our music program. Thank you for being here. This is a chapel glorifying God in worship, service, fellowship, and love. Let us pray. Creator God, maker of stars and seashores, Reveal your word to us this day, in which all things were made. Redeemer God, caller of disciples, light our lamps this day. Dress us for action, and open the doors of our hearts and minds. Sustainer God, sender of the Holy Spirit, renew in us the faith of our ancestors, that we might claim it as our own covenant with you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. amen. Please stand as you're able, sing our opening hymn, Come Sinners to the Gospel Feast. Good morning, everybody, and welcome. It's good to see you here. Good morning. Now is the time for the call to worship. Please join me. God called Abraham and Sarah and promised to bless them. Through faith, they obeyed and received God's inheritance. God called Isaac and Jacob as heirs of that promise. They too followed in faith, seeking God's realm. God calls us to join them as heirs with the faithful.
Sometimes he can only really sing it out, can't he? <laughs> Please join me in the prayer for illumination. Hear the word of the Lord and listen to God's teaching. For God's word contains warning and promise, a gift to be treasured and lived. Whether we receive this gift is a choice we make. Amen. The scripture this morning is from the book of Hebrews, chapter 11, verses 1 through 3, and verses 8 through 12, about faith in action. Now faith is confidence in what we hope for and assurance about what we do not see. This is what the ancients were commended for. By faith we understand that the universe was formed at God's command, so that what is seen was not made out of what was not visible. By faith Abraham, when called to go to a place he would later receive as his inheritance, obeyed and went, even though he did not know where he was going. By faith he made his home in the promised land like a stranger in a foreign country. He lived in tents, as did Isaac and Jacob, who were heirs with him of the same promise. For he was looking forward to the city with foundations, whose architect and builder is God. And by faith even Sarah, who was past childbearing age, was enabled to bear children because she considered him faithful, who had made the promise. And so from this one man, and he is as good as dead, came descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky, and as countless as the sand on the seashore. The word of God for the people of God. Have you ever attended a worship service that seemed more of a show than worship? Have you ever sat in the service and thought, where's the magic? I don't mean that you come to worship to accept magic with a charming magician and his lovely assistant pulling rabbits out of everywhere. Now, you might enjoy that, but that's not what's happening today. See, I have no desire to make a spectacle out of worship. What I believe is there ought to be a sense of expectancy. When you come into the sanctuary, that something special is going to happen. As you enter, you're thinking that God is going to be present with us here this day, and the Holy Spirit enters with us. I believe the 11th chapter of Hebrews has that kind of magic. And if the writer seeks to define what is faith, and it's clear he believes in the magic of faith. He begins with a definition. Now faith is confidence in what we hope and assurance about what we do not see. By faith we understand that the universe was formed at God's command. And so what is seen was not made out of what was visible. The writer is taking us back to the time when God said, let there be light. And there was light. And then the writer of Hebrews takes us to the first chapters in the Bible. He begins with Abel and shows how Abel's offering was more accepted than Cain's because of faith. And then he deals with Enoch, Noah, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Joseph, Moses, and yes, Rehab. All this shows the importance of these people who had faith. And then he adds more names. He adds Gideon, Barak, Samson, David, Samuel, and all the prophets who through faith conquered kingdoms, administered justice, and gained what was promised. It's a stirring chapter filled with magic that only God can perform. We see that same magic in our scripture 
The writer focuses on the 99-year-old patriarch, Moses. I'm sorry, Abraham. <laughs> yeah. Moses got old, but that's a whole other story. We'll get to that in a little bit. And Abraham discovers that his 89-year-old wife is pregnant. That's pretty fantastic by itself. Listen as he describes this elderly couple. By faith, Abraham, when called to go to a place where he would later receive his inheritance, obeyed and went, even though he didn't know where he was coming. There's no GPS, no maps to show that God said, this is where you're going to go. This is what it looks like. He had no clue. And he went anyway. And Sarah, by faith, well past childbearing age, God enabled her to have children. And from this one man, and the scripture says, as good as dead. He was 99 years old, and yet God promised there would be descendants. So many, as many as the stars in the sky, or the sand at the seashore. An 89-year-old woman, well past childbearing ages, bears a child to a 99-year-old man, as good as dead. That's what the writer of Hebrews says. If that's not magic, I don't know what is. But it's not the kind of magic a magician can perform. It's magic that only God can perform. And it's magic that can only be seen through the eyes of faith. Again, the writer of Hebrews gives us a description of the nature of faith. Let's begin with the most elementary statement possible. Faith is belief in God. However, it's not simply that God exists, but that God is present with us wherever we go. And he's working with us and for our best interest. Many of you, like me, have probably read Max Lucado, a great author. And he talks about spending a week with a missionary pilot in Brazil. And in this work, this missionary pilot went from town to town bringing supplies and providing worship. And Lakeda went with him. It was just a four-seater plane. And Lakeda says the plane was not in that great a shape. Lakeda suggested that he thought that Orville and Wilbur Wright had a more sturdy and better plane than what he was flying with. And he said he couldn't get comfortable. He kept thinking they were going to crash somewhere in the Brazilian jungle. And his two options were he was going to be either eaten by piranha or swallowed by an anaconda. <laughs> he said he kept shifting around in his seat, trying to get comfortable, holding on to the seat, fidgeting. And finally, the pilot got irritated and said, listen, we won't face anything I can't handle. You might as well trust me to fly the plane. And my friend, that is faith. You've probably seen the bumper sticker, God is my co-pilot. And that's the kind of faith that the Hebrew writer is talking about. But if God is your co-pilot, swap seats. <laughs> swap seats. Make God the pilot. Let God take you where you're going to go so that eternal life will be open to you. God says to us, you might as well trust me to fly the plane. We need faith to trust him. A woman named Etta Butterfield talks about her husband, Ron, who once taught a class for a mentally impaired teenager. He looked at the students' capabilities rather than their limitations. He called them all kinds of wonderful things. 
He taught them how to play chess, how to restore furniture, how to repair electrical appliances, things that many people thought they were incapable of. Most important, he taught them to believe in themselves. There was one young man named Bobby who in a short time showed how he hadn't got what they were trying to teach. One day he came in bringing a broken toaster under his arm and a half a loaf of bread under his other arm. When Ron asked Bobby about the bread, Bobby said, I brought it so I can have some toast after I fix the toaster. That's confidence. Confidence that he can do what he was supposed to do. Faith in God is like that. Don't bring in a toaster for a repair unless you're also bringing a loaf of bread. Faith is belief that not only does God exist, but he cares for you and he will provide for you. That brings us to the second thing of what faith is. Since we trust God, faith is also living in obedience to God's will. This is where the rubber meets the road. Abraham just didn't believe in God's existence. He trusted God. Abraham went where God told him to go and did God what God wanted him to do. He obeyed God. We ask, do you believe in God? And we say, of course we believe in God. Everybody believes in God. We say, do you believe in Jesus Christ? Of course we believe in Jesus Christ. I went to Sunday school. I learned all about Jesus in Sunday school. We ask, have you fully committed your life to Jesus? Enough so that you will commit all you are and all you have for him. And we say, hold on there. I'm not a religious fanatic, if that's what you mean. But I'm a Christian. I believe. Is that what it's all about, just saying, I believe? Somehow the writer of Hebrews in this letter, we read about victories that were won, persecutions that were endured. I cannot help but think that faith is such more, much more than saying, I believe. The writer of James, Jesus' brother, and verse 2.19 says, even the demons believe and shudder. Faith is more than believing. The list of Hebrews of the old, the list of heroes that the Old Testament provides is a list of persons who put their trust and their lives in the conviction that God believes. Faith is not simply an intellectual acceptance of an idea. It's a life-changing choice we make to walk where God would have us go. Faith is also an unshakable sense of trust that keeps us going when things get dark and we go through difficult valleys. All of us at one point or another will walk through a valley. That's the way life is. We'll all be discouraged at some time. No one is exempt. But that doesn't mean we give up. There's always a way out if we allow God's spirit to guide us. Faith is a commitment of all we are and hope to be to God. Faith is this assurance that God who created us is in every battle with us. Faith is also the unshakable trust that God is always with us, wherever we go. There's a telephone lineman who's working on a pole, and all of a sudden the pole snapped, hit the ground, and landed on top of him. His insides were badly crushed and he was rushed to the hospital where they didn't think he would survive. The pastor learned of this when the man's wife called him, asked him to come to the hospital right away. She said the best 
two surgeons in the community had operated on him and said he had an hour left to live. Would you come and baptize him? He said he got to the hospital and walked into the room and the man was the color of death, too weak to speak. Quickly, the pastor explained that God loved him and he explained baptism and that it makes one a child of God and your sins are forgiven through Jesus who died on the cross for our sins. And then he asked the man if he wanted to be baptized. The man just acknowledged with a slight shake of the head because that's all he had. After the baptism, the pastor asked the wife, are you sure of the best doctors? And she said, yes, an hour. He waited for a while, and finally he told the wife, I'm gonna go, when he dies, call me, I'll be back. He got no call that night. He got no call the next day. So the following day, he called the wife, and she told him he's still alive. Some of his color had returned. She said, after you left, he fell asleep for the first time since he had come in. He's even eating some. The man recovered completely. Several months later, he was back climbing telephone poles. All the medical help was not enough. But evidently, the introduction of faith, spiritual dimension, had caused the man to rally. One more thing to be found in our lesson for today. Faith is a promise through Jesus Christ there is eternal life and heaven. A city with foundation whose architect and builder is God. It's interesting. We talk far less about heaven than our mothers and fathers did. See, we seem to be a secular society. Our kingdom is the here and now. No wonder we have so little joy. No wonder our lives display so little magic. No wonder so many dread the process of aging and are haunted by the fear of death. Now, I've got to tell you, I don't see that here at Lansdowne Woods. Well, I'm sure there is a few, but this is a vibrant community. We're enjoying life, even though we're a little older. Yes. But that's life. See, we believe that life does not end at the grave. We believe. And if you have faith, you're always looking forward. Positive expectations. Unquenchable hope. Such a spirit comes from a lifetime of commitment and trust. It doesn't happen overnight. And it doesn't come easily. There are good days and bad days. But we always know that life goes on. And when it doesn't, we're in a better place. Do you believe in God? Yes, we believe in God. Do you have the faith of Abraham, of the promises of God, do you believe that God will always be with you, even when you're in the valleys? If you believe those things, my friends, then you have faith. Amen. Amen. Please stand as you're able. We will sing the hymn, Christ, we are blessed. And yes, we are. <laughs>
you may be seated. Our ushers could come forward. now prepare our hearts to receive this gift from God, Holy Communion. Here at the chapel, this is an open table. All who believe are welcome to come. Hear now this invitation. Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace. 
with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors. And we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, we are all forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Almighty God, the Creator of heaven and earth. You formed us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life. When we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. You delivered us from captivity, made covenant be our sovereign God, and spoke to us through your prophets, who looked for that day when justice shall roll down like water and righteousness like an ever-flowing stream, when nations shall not lift up sword against nation, rather they shall learn war no more. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of our power and might, heaven and earth are the Lord of your glory. Blessed be in our hearts. Blessed be in our hearts in the name of the Lord. Blessed be in our hearts. Holy are you and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ. Your Spirit anointed him to preach good news to the poor, to proclaim a release to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty all those who are oppressed, and to announce that the time had come when you would save your people. He healed the sick, fed the hungry, he ate with sinners. By the baptism of his suffering death and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death and make with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. At his ascension you exalted him to sit and reign with you at his right hand. On the night when he gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples saying, take, eat, this is my body given for you, do this in remembrance of me. And when the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, almighty God, and gave it to his disciples, said, take, drink, this is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these the mighty acts, in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ is God, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and cup. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. And by your spirit, make us one with Christ, 
one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Be your son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church. All honor and glory is yours, almighty God, now and forever. And now, with the confidence of the children of God, let us pray the prayer the Lord has taught us to say. Our Father, Father who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Because there is one loaf. We who are many all partake in the one loaf. The bread we break is sharing in the body of Christ. The cup over which we give thanks is a sharing of the body and blood of Christ. We will now take communion together. Will those assisting me please come forward? We will have two stations. Brenda and Trotty will first take care of the choir. Uh, Kent and I will be over here taking this side of the room. Please come forward. You will be given the bread and the cup. You may eat them here, or you may go back to your seat, whatever makes you comfortable. Uh, our ushers will have a plastic bag or um, to take the cups once you are done with them uh, and they will direct you to come forward. The table is set. We are at the banquet. We are sharing with all Christians everywhere the blood and body of Christ. Please come. <laughs>
Please bow your heads. Eternal God, we give you thanks for this holy mystery in which you have given yourself to us. Grant that we may go into the world in the strength of your spirit and give ourselves for others. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please stand as you are able for our closing hymn, 438. Forth in thy name, O Lord.
may be seated. Just a couple of brief announcements. Uh, time choir is meeting again this week on Wednesday night, 5.45, I believe, because they are playing on Sunday. Next Sunday is Hymn Week, is Hymn Sun Sunday, and the Times will play Blessed Assurance. Uh, we can always use one or two more players, so if you can, please come out and join us. It's a lot of fun. Now, I mentioned Hymn Sing Sunday. Is, next, is she going to come sing with us next Sunday? <laughs> <laughs> she is welcome. <laughs> uh, and after the service, we are going to have lunch. And if you're extra good, there may be some ice cream. <laughs> but we need to know how many are coming so that we can have the right amount of food. So please let the or Laverne. I have enough food for everybody here. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so uh, I'm looking forward to it. It's going to be a lot of fun. Okay, so uh, and the hymns we are singing, you all chose. I didn't choose them. And the, the six most popular songs that you sung that you asked us to do. And so that's what we're going to do. Um, I didn't have the flyer put in the bulletin. There is one on the back. But with the activities committee here and with our kind of congregation, with our Jewish friends here and our Catholic friends here, there is a Rise Against Hunger uh, feeding that we will do the packing in October. We need to raise $5,000. Hold your breath. Just a second. We have to raise $5,000 so we can feed 15,000 meals, I believe is what it says we're going to do. Now, the good news is the activities committee has already collected 2,000. So I see that we, as our congregation, need to raise 1,000. Our Jewish and Catholic friends can raise the rest. And activities committee is still doing things to raise money. But this is a world worthwhile thing. We need to be, and a lot of this goes to children uh, because they take it to where they are, the schools and other things, because you can't learn if you're hungry. So this is a worthwhile thing for us to get involved in and that we can do and we can partake in the packing, I assure you, everyone here, if they desire, can take part. It's a great program. Faith. Abraham had faith. We got GPS and we know where we're going. <laughs> well, sometimes it gets you lost. I admit. <laughs> I've ended up in a field when we're supposed to be at a restaurant. But <laughs> and we believe in heaven. We need to have faith in God to get us there. Simply saying, I believe, is not enough. We need to live our faith, which is why we take part in the missions we take part in, in the feeding in Loudoun, and the feeding of children, and the feeding of people in the world. Faith, believe in God, and as I say, the rewards are heavenly. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Okay. <laughs>